Good evening, adventures. It is Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. on the West, and 7 a.m. Wednesday morning in Bangkok, Thailand, which means it is time for our flagship long-term campaign, Twilight Malediction, here on Growed Up Geek Gaming. I am your host and Dungeon Master Manny. Add Growed Up Geek on your social medias, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, if you like what we do here, give us a follow, subscribe on any of those platforms. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we are back tonight, episode 36. Really getting up there. Um, towards the tail end of our first campaign here before we jump yep. into our next one. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as always, we will meet our amazing cast. We'll do a quick recap and then we will jump right into uh, episode 36 that we've titled The Ancient Necropolis in no way threatening, ominous, or, you know, whatever. Just typical good fashion D&D fun. Uh, before we get to all that, let us meet our amazing cast. Um, let us start with uh, the West Coast. Uh, we'll move west to east here. Uh, sunlight to darkness. Uh, our international correspondent and life cleric, uh, Dustin, tell us about Kelroth. My name is Dustin. I play Kelroth. I am a half elf cleric of the life domain. I went through some interesting stuff. I started off as a pacifist, and now I'm, I'm, I'm more okay with kicking the bad guy's butt. Killed, and killed a wizard because <laughs> she was I, saucy. I, yeah, well, I mean, Dave, I'll thank you very there, much for but, the sub, buddy. Appreciate it. But yes, uh, I'm here to try and fix the problems in Icewind Dale and not kill too many people along the way. Yeah, man. Resident I'm, healer. Sure. Uh, do no harm, but take no shit. Um, it's fine. The take no shit part was with your girl, Valin Harple, before you killed her. Um, oh, thanks, Dave. She really appreciate it. Yeah, she was mean. Fuck pacifism. Um, She's a bitch. Yeah. It was fun. I, mi I miss her. <laughs> I personally miss her. Um, I mean... She was a lot of fun. I, I miss her as a... As a, as a as a player <laughs> antagonist um all right fabulous um let us slide over uh let's slide up to our resident monk from another plane of existence is that fair like i don't i don't really know yeah like... i think we I think we, we figured it's you know another plane same reality just different yeah like we <laughs> haven't really figured out how they how they tie together yet uh yet maybe who knows um lou tell us about Balder. Uh, I'm Lewis, playing Balder, who is a Way of the Living Weapon monk and, uh, you know, loves traveling with his companions, has some, uh, you know, feelings about, you know, how they operate. But, you know, that's everybody, you know, who doesn't, who doesn't question their friends every now and again? But uh, yeah, um, you know, loved loves to loves to travel with the guys. Just is a little more guarded now. Yeah, Mr. Wand was Mr. Wand was a fun session or two. I miss Mr. Wand too. Like you guys are just <laughs> taking away all my good fun NPCs by making rational and smart decisions, and I don't know that I'm here for it. Um, speaking <laughs> of Mr. Wand, uh, the only person uh, in tonight's show who probably misses him more than I do. Um, Landon, tell us about Oren. Oren is a rock gnome artificer. And let's just say that he is not the best judge of character. The feelings he had for Mr. Wand were true until Balder <laughs> ruined them. Oren could spend the rest of his days with Mr. Wand, but that mean old Balder is preventing their love. Um, it's, Romeo, no, it's Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> Mr. Wand only ever wanted to be there for him. But the parents are so stuck in the old ways, they won't let it persist. Our it really sounds like we're talking about masturbation. <laughs> Our D&D groups devolved into, uh, devolved into Montagues and Capulets. Um, so, um, Mr. Wand aside... <laughs> Didn't mean, if to, I didn't had mean to, to pick at that scab, sorry. If I had to describe Oren in a sentence, it would be if someone told him 
I think Manny is the one who actually came up with this one. If someone told him that it, if you licked an autumn, that it would have some magical effect, he would be licking that autumn. <laughs> He'd give it a lick to, just to see what happens. So or he's uh, very... He, he loves experimenting, and he loves uh, uh, adventure, new things. So that's it. What? Um, yeah, so... Uh, don't lick anything. Like, just it's probably like a pretty safe rule. Don't split the party. Don't lick anything, especially. But what if it does something cool? <sighs> I mean, there's probably a random table that goes with it of shit that is not cool. Just to say. Um, all right, uh, let us move on to somebody who doesn't lick things but bites them. Um, our lone resident of Icewind Dale, so he's been hopping around his hood through this whole uh, expedition. Um, Tenta, tell us about Jatuli. I'm Tenta. I played Jatuli. I am the sole resident of Icewind Dale. It is my land. I am the war shaman of this land. I am a very large lizard folk barbarian. I killed my own brother by throwing him off the cliff. And I eat drow faces and everyone else's faces. And I'm currently affronted by these mages and these people speaking in a language that I don't. So it's fighting time. How dare you speak a different <laughs> language than me? How Ford, dare you? You Ford bastards. Hey, Dave, thank you very much for all the gift subs, buddy. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> you foreign bastards, how dare you? We come into your home and you don't have the courtesy to speak our language? It's bullshit. What did um, they say? Fuck that. Yeah, no. It took her gems. So, um, as we've mentioned, um, so we'll just jump right in. As we uh, came across last week, the party, um, I will say once again, uh, I'm very proud of you all for realizing that you didn't have to fight the Remoraz, Ziz, um, because I really had to worry about like what happens if we do TPK like this far in. Like That would be pretty shitty, but like also it definitely could have happened. So very proud of you all last week. Very good. Um, after they showed discretion as the better part of Valor, uh, Jim Rossline, um, they slid down into another uh, chamber of the Caves of Hunger. Uh, Bowling pinned down two more uh, gnome or kobold vampires, uh, encountered them, dealt with uh, something they had encountered before, uh, another knoll. Uh, vampire, one that has escaped that they dealt with in the Dark Duchess. I think that was the name of the boat. Um, and as they did so in this kind of chamber within the Caves of Hunger, uh, they found two people. Um, one of them, Sindri, uh, Orin's long lost friend and kind of the reason for Orin to be, one of the reasons for Orin to be on this quest and his master, uh, Avarice, who'd been spoken of by Vlyn Harpel and maybe even Dazan's um, Simulacrum had mentioned her before. Uh, the problem was Avarice had been bitten and was very much on the verge of turning to vampirism. Uh, Sindri, unable to, to do it, it's his teacher. Um, luckily, party there for you. I got you, fam. Um, and they put her out of her misery uh, and continued on to the frozen necropolis. I guess we can show that for the actual map. Um, you truly did it. Yeah. Uh, of course you did. Um, and <laughs> they exited the caverns and into finally encountering the frozen netherese city that had crashed years ago that contains the magic relic that the party needs to potentially end Oral's curse. Uh, as they made their way through the city, they saw one large central spire kind of covered by this blue magical shell that was projected from four smaller towers kind of scattered about the city. As the party first made their way to the tower, realized the potential danger of proceeding through without checking out the smaller towers first, 
Uh, they encountered a city of essentially ghosts and specters, most likely of the citizens of the city when it was a, an actual floating city uh, high above Faerun, but uh, due to a catastrophe. Uh, it found its way, crashed into Icewind Dales, and covered over uh, in ice by a glacier over thousands of years. As the party made their way to one of the towers, the very first one, uh, they encountered uh, these kind of spectral beings that slowly coalesced and began to scream at them uh, in a language that was incomprehensible to the party. Uh, Kelroth and his knack for languages uh, eventually hit on an older language that the um, ghosts, maybe, uh, spoke. And while the party tried to reason with them and explain to them their current predicament, that the city had crashed and was no longer floating above the countryside of Faerun, um, they didn't believe them, called them liars, realized that they were intruders. And after a little bit of a salty exchange, uh, the party has found themselves uh, in this encounter with two sword-bearing ones, I believe. Let me pull up the... Um... Yeah, it looks like two with swords. Two with swords. Two that are just mean-looking... Uh, whatever his name is from the Watchmen. Oh. Mr. Manhattan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there's two Doctor. Mr. Manhattan and two people with sword. Doctor. Yeah, Doctor Manhattan. Doctor Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor. Go to all that medical school or whatever the fuck he went to. Um, so, as we do, uh, GG, hold on, let me just get pen said. Uh, after a little bit of getting salty, Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get the stat. I didn't get the stat blocks in. Um. All right. Uh. Everybody, roll for initiative, please. And I already dropped a d twenty. And I dropped my d twenty. Twelve. For what, Jadouli? Yeah. Alright, I've decided that oh, advantage on that. I, forgot. I don't want to be Still a fun. cheater, so I'm just gonna use the and just D and D Beyond today. Really? So, so nobody can be like, oh, you, you just Fudge the roll because it's going bad on D and D Beyond. No, 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 no. I'm gonna it's ride this. I'm gonna ride Beyond. this train to the end. It, it's not that we have 36 sessions of D and D Beyond fucking me over every single time. No. <laughs> this time it's gonna be different. Uh -huh. I think it was only 72 percent of the time. Oh, that's right. We, we did some math last time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I only 72 percent of the time my dice rolls were what lower than 10. Yeah. That's that's a that's statistical bad. norm. <laughs> For a twenty-sided die uh, to not be fifty-fifty after thirty-six sessions. Nope, sixty-forty, Anyways, son. I rolled an eleven. Ooh, but it's minus two Ooh, because I have minus two. Nice. So. Nice. so I got a nine. <laughs> Balder. Uh, fourteen. Ooh. No, no. Yeah, fourteen. Fourteen. Orin. Yeah. Well. Wow. Um, yeah, not yeah, great. Not, not great today. Not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, we'll make up for it with some nat 20s on the attack roll. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Two. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. All right. So as your little spicy, kind of ghostly figures spring to life and take a very threatening kind of pose uh, stance towards you. The blue orbs that are in uh, 12, 6, and, or 12, 3, and 9 o'clock in the room um, begin to glow more intensely as the kind of demeanor of the figures change 
and Balder is going to be first to act. Wow. Um, okay. Wasn't expecting that one. Um, I would assume you have right. higher decks than the monsters who also rolled 14. Oh, all right. Yeah, uh, most likely. <laughs> Unless they got like a, a plus five no, on there. No, plus two. <laughs> okay. They really yeah. They don't have a higher dex than the monk. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna do the monk thing and punch them in the junk. Yeah. Uh, kind of. I'm gonna attempt to knock this one that's on the left hand side right here. Okay. Um, so, uh, 24 to hit? Yes. All right. And then 19 to hit? Ah, uh, yes. All right. On the first one, it's seven points of psychic, or no, uh, four points of psychic, seven points of regular, and okay. then in the second hit it is eight points of damage. And then I'm going to take my bonus action melee. Um, Eighteen to hit. Yes. Uh, eight more points of damage. Okay. As you take your swings at this creature that half looks kind of ghostly and not really entirely formed, um, you do manage to hit it, and it makes no expressions. Um, it shows no signs of pain. But what it does do is it almost blinks out like with the impacts from this form that's in front of you to just temporarily blinks its way out and comes back and as it does it kind of flickers irregularly uh, as it stands there after you take your punches uh, it is now the monster's turn uh, the one right in front of Balder is going to take Two swings with its great sword. With the cards in front of me. Uh, uh, 13 to hit's not going to get it done, but a crit 20 will. You're lucky. 14. 20 is my AC. 14. 18. You're going to take 20 slashing damage as it rears Ugh. back with this magical sword uh, and makes a real strong shot at you. Uh, the other one is going to do the same. Two big long sword shots. Uh, neither one of them are going to connect. The wizards in the back Going to make the move up to Jatuli. It's going to reach out. It's going to. Jatuli, you're not wearing any metal, are you? No. Okay. I'm barely wearing any clothes. <laughs> I'm naked. Uh. Excuse me. A 19 and a 24 to hit? Both are hits. 4, 8, 12. You gotta pick on the little tiny lizard. You're gonna take <laughs> uh, 12 lightning damage. Okay. And the other one is going to float up to Balder. And I'm going to need Jatuli and Balder to make a dexterity saving throw, please. And I do realize how dumb that sounds now that it's coming out of my mouth. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's also going to he's also gonna, uh, 
move into my melee, so I'm gonna make my reaction okay. attack as well after that uh, deck save. Deck save. Uh, dirty twenty. Okay. I also got a dirty twenty. Very nice. Oh no! Oh shit! Um, you're gonna take sixteen lightning damage. Nope. Uh, yeah, I know you. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. So I rolled ten, ten, and two. Ten, 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 and two on four d ten. Um, so that was about as bad as I could get. Uh, so you're gonna take sixteen. Lightning damage, that's going to be it for the monsters. And Jatuli, it is actually your turn. So I take 16? Yes. Ow. Why would you do that to me? Okay. Hold on, let me make my melee uh, yeah. on him. Ooh, ooh, that's a natural 20 okay. on that dude for rolling up in my space. Um, so that's... Well, that... Father, do the punch on them. Thirteen plus eighteen. Critical attack of opportunity is a joy to see. And then, so he takes. If fuck around and find out was an ability. <laughs> Twenty nine. Uh, Thirty two points of damage altogether. Ooh. All of it magic, uh, some of it psychic. <laughs> um, so it glitches out hard uh, and is kind of twitchy and is having something of a hard time kind of staying focused. Uh, Jatuli. I imagine, right. it's, I imagine it's shopping time. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's shopping time. Why, yes, Manny. It is, in fact, chopping time. So, this guy right here? The bald one right near you? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Manhattan, number one. All right. Let's give him some chops. So, 26 to hit on yes. the first chop. 18 to hit from the second chop. Yes. And critical hit from the third chop. See? Everybody right. wanted to talk about how bad initiative rolls are. Here they come. <laughs> All right. Well, let's resolve the first two choppies. Max damage. Um, so 16 points from the first chop. Okay. 14 points from the second chop. Okay. And then... I got... Oh, how, how do we do crits again? I forgot. Max damage, roll again. Max damage, yeah. Max damage max plus damage a roll. roll again. And I get to roll twice because I have nasty criticals from being a barbarian. There you go. That's nasty. Wow. <laughs> you nasty. Damn, Manny. That was that was dirty. So For who? For I, me or for you? For for Dr. Manhattan. Okay. That was thirty four points of slashing damage. Magical slashing damage. Uh, all right. Describe to me what your like absolute vengeful fury at these bastards who had the audacity to speak another language in their home. <laughs> well, no. At least the ones that are alive have learned the lesson. Uh, so the first chop was right in the stomach. The second chop was on the other side of the stomach. The third chop, I pulled them both out and whack off the top of his head not the not at the neck but the top of his head as 
it does and it glitches out into like just little bits particles of an existence uh, it falls into a little pile that seems to kind of collect and then glow brighter 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 uh, Zutoli, I need a dexterity saving throw from you, please. All right. Critical. Dexterity. Uh, as you do, the glowing pool uh, explodes with like a pretty violent pop. Seven, twelve. You're going to take six uh, radiant damage as this just bright, sparkling... Uh, essentially chemical reaction of its death uh, causes. Uh, all right, what else you got? That, well, that's the end of my chopping. Okay. So now I'm going to make a move here and get behind this guy. Okay. All right. Um, okay, that's it? Yeah. All right, Oren. I'm still to my accomplishments, man. I know, I always feel so bad when I'm always like, is that it? Seems that all you got? Is that it? You just crit once and hit twice. <laughs> Orin seems to have enough movement to get right about here. So that's where he's going to go. Okay. Just moving around the Megans, Magens, well, however they're pronounced. And he is going to Thunder Gauntlet, each of them. The first one will go to the Demos, and the second will be with Dr. Manhattan. Okay. <laughs> the current Dr. Manhattan. Well, the other one's dead. Yeah. <laughs> There's only it's one. It's not now. even a pile of dust. It's a it's a burnt scorch mark on the floor. Fifteen to hit. Uh, on the demos. The demos. What yeah. was it? Fifteen. Fifteen is not going to get it done. All right. The second one will go with the Galvin. Dr. Manhattan. One. Yeah, Dr. Manhattan. Aha, this one hits. It's 26. Yes. Yeah, if you tell me that one doesn't hit, I'll be really... <sighs> Sorry, just short. Nine thunder damage. Right to his kneecap. All right. Yeah. Very good. And yeah. then um, my homunculus, which would be roughly around where Kalroth is, will go ahead and strike at the, the Damos one, the one that I had missed. Okay. That's, that's the one that Balder attacked earlier, isn't it? No, the one on the left that is. One. Oh, that's what the homunculus will attack in. Sorry. Okay. Uh, that's not going to get done. 13. No, it's 13 not going to get done. <laughs> so they, right. they conveniently blink out just as you and the homunculus are about to hit it. Uh, Dr. Manhattan did take his shot um, and seems kind of irate and hellbent on punching the little man back. Uh, is that it for you? Like a little chihuahua. I annoy <laughs> people. <laughs> I taunt them. <laughs> Alright, yeah, don't get stepped it. on now. Calm down. Um, Alright, fabulous. Kelroth. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna ah uh, charge up, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh where is it? Uh, these are like ghost things, sort of, right? Like um, they kind of seem ghostly. Yes. All right. Well, maybe my radiant damage will do some extra damage. Let's find out. Yeah. I rolled a one. Oh. Good job, D and D Beyond. Uh, hey now, <laughs> that is that is my turn. R and Jesus does not always save. Um, all right, back up to the top, Balder. Uh, everybody is literally like within punching range of you. Yeah, and I've hit two out of the three of them already. So, um, all right. We'll go back to uh guy in the middle right here. Okay. Ooh. Uh, 10's not going to do it, is it? It is not. Yeah, all right. And then...
slightly better this time. Um, Be right back. 16? 16 will get it done. All right. Eleven points of regular, one point of psychic, and then bonus action. Oh, nice! Another crit, dude. Jesus. All right. So that's uh. And that is 19 points of damage this time. Okay. Um, describe to me how you take Dr. Manhattan down. Uh, have you ever seen Roundhouse? No, but I did watch Bloodsport <laughs> yesterday. It's on HBO. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Uh, that's, you know, th th that's a great, great thing. It's kind of, you know, when he finish him off and then just kind of like stands over him and just ah! I will fight anybody who has anything bad to say about blood sport I just want to get that out there right now. that movie's <laughs> fucking amazing um, Love. so as you just look off into the camera slightly distant gaze having recently been blinded by Chun-Li as the case may be um, yeah right it too glitches, blinks, comes back, blinks, comes back at irregular intervals until it eventually kind of falls into this pile of dust. And I need you to make a deck save. And if you, All right. oh, you, it only matters if you fail, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So it it basically it'll 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 happen if I fail. But yes. Other than that, which might happen. Does a twelve do it? It does not. Oh. And it's All actually right. it's actually kind of sad and low. Where to go? Uh... How important is this for you to get? Because I can use a uh, flash of genius. I have three uses of it left. I I I would recommend not wasting it, but that's me. Oh, you Sorry, got off, you got off lucky. Um, you're gonna take six uh, radiant damage. I, I don't know if six. that's lucky, but it it could it could have been worse. I mean, you know, three d three d three d six could have been worse. Yeah, it definitely could have been way worse. Um, all right. So, is that is that all your round of attacks? Do you want to move anywhere? Um, uh, I'm gonna. I'm in a decent spot. I'm all right. Okay. I'm in right. kicking distance of <laughs> both of them, so I'm all right. Very good. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll go back to the... It is now... Uh, yeah, the monster's turn. The sword-bearing one closest to Jatuli is going to take two big sword chops. Uh, I think both of them are going to get it done, too. At me? Uh, yeah. What? 20 and 22? Two hits. I, pro I provoked nothing. Mm -hmm. Four, six, nine, 13 slashing damage for all of that. Is that reduced? Uh, no. Uh, that's going to be your six. You're up six. Uh, all right. The okay. so now I'm dead now. Uh, the other one, seeing Orin, is gonna take two swings at him, and I'm not even gonna dig your one will protect me. I'm not even gonna ask. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I miss. Uh, that's gonna be it for the monsters. Uh, and Jatuli next to act. Yes. Jatuli's turn. All right, Demos Magan. Mag Demos Maggots. Yeah, you maggot. All right, let's go ahead and put some chops on him. Uh, 
15? Uh, yes. 19? Yes. And a 10, so I'm guessing that's a miss. New. So two chops. Do, 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 do. So 12 damage and 16 damage. Okay. Uh, describe to me how you dispatch of this one. This one, I chop him in the shoulder to kind of knock him off balance. And then I come around on the other side and chop him in the neck. And then I use my action to disengage. <laughs> okay. As you hit it, it blinks and it you know, glitches out and then just poof. Nothing. Uh, once it goes dark uh, permanently. All right, you're going to step out a little bit. Uh, what else? Is that it? Yeah, some Pavlov's dog action on that one. <laughs> yipe, 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 yipe. Uh, you burn me, I'm not going to stand there again. No, nah, it's only Dr. Manhattan. Uh, all right, uh, Oren. Oren is going to punch this last one that he missed last time. Okay. So. Right in the face. Well, he wishes. Actually, he, he might be able to jump that high. He has a 10 strength. It's not. Uh, too high for him to jump. In so, all that armor. Two strikes. Uh, 15 and 22. Both of them. Awesome. And a total of 15 thunder damage. That's total. Better than anyone else. You thundered the shit out of it. Alright. So yeah. I need you both, though. Both thunder and then, uh, and then the servant will take its strike at it. Okay. And that's not gonna do it. It's thirteen to hit. It is not. I think, yeah, I think that's what I rolled last time on that one. All right. Uh, we have just the one sword bearing one remaining. Uh, Orin, is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, Kelroth. I have the power. I will not roll a one this time. Hiya! Did ya? Nope. Uh, I rolled an. Uh, I got an eight. Oh wait, no. I ro well. Hold on. Let me do math. No, I got a seventeen. I rolled initiative instead of attack. Yes. Okay. 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 There we go. <laughs> I was like minus two to my attack roll. I didn't think I was that bad. <laughs> really out of practice. Yeah. Okay. Oh God, I rolled a one and so I do eight damage. Four of it is radiant. All right. Um, as you chop at it, or what? You bludgeon it. What do you have? Oh, one of your. I have a. Hand, I have like a shitty little hand axe. <laughs> Shatuli's castaway. Um, yep. As you make your chomp at it, it too uh, finds purchase, and you you know feel like a solid connection. And the image, the actual thing in front of you, blinks out and comes back at kind of an irregular pattern until settling back into kind of this static presence. Uh, is that it for you? That's it. All right. I mean, yeah, that's it. All right. You know that was a well maintained shitty hand axe. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yeah, sure, it's, it's fine. It's, it's very fine. sharp. Um, all right, back up to the top of Balder. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to go for the guy that I haven't touched. I'm going to kind of like turn around and give him like the tie in the bandana around the knee stare. I break you like I break your friend. <laughs> like I break your friend. Brick, no hit back. <laughs> Uh, 12 for the first one. No, not going to get a gun. I've seen that movie more than any movie ever, and maybe all the others combined. What, Bloodsport? And then yeah. a 15 on the second one. 15, yes. Okay, USA. All right. <laughs> Brick, no hit back. I love that movie, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. I love uh, that movie. So... 11 points of regular, 5 points of psychic... 
and then I'm gonna bonus action melee with a 17 yes and that's uh, six points of damage okay. as you connect with this and the blinking uh, becomes a little more irregular and a little longer between durations of it kind of coalescing back into a fully formed being. Uh, it finally does so and it looks around and it's going to take two big great sword chops at Balder. Uh, at disadvantage. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I should have marked it. That's I'm fine. Sorry, um, you're. Ooh, one of them is going to get through, though. Uh, 19? No. No? Oh, okay, cool. Nope. Uh, then none of them get through, uh, as it's kind of irregular blinking prevents it from actually even hitting you. Um, Jutuli, it's time, to, it's time to get back in there. No, uh, no need to be gun shy. All right, now that it's my turn, I just wanted to say, fuck Frank Dukes. That guy was a hoax. His whole story of leaving the military to go to a secret tournament in Hong Kong, that was bullshit. Yes, I, re I read a story about it. I'm going to cave your head in. Because that was the hardest pill for me to swallow next to wrestling isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad you moved through this as an adult. I'm very proud of you. You seem to have made progress. Good for you. It took a long time for me to move through it, though. Gosh. The pain was so real. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put some action on Demos Magan here. Casually saunter up to him. Start chopping. 20. Yes. First of all, you can't use the word saunter and chop in the same <laughs> sentence, all right? Like, Come on, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Old 70s pimp walk. <laughs> Shut up, baby, I know it. <laughs> well, does a 13 hit? Uh, it does not. Does a 15 hit? 15 does. All right, so then he gets two of these chops that I've got on deck. You can catch both of these hands. Both of these hands. That's so right. ten damage and eleven damage. Okay. And as you strike this and it blinks out for the last time, the three lights in the room get ever brighter, bringing up the light within the room itself, uh, almost making it too bright to. You know, not have to squint. Um, it's not damaging. It's just a very bright light in a relatively small um, indoor space. Uh, immediately flanking the entrance in which you came in, there is a set of spiral stairs that goes entirely around the perimeter and eventually up into the second floor. What do you guys want to do? Probably head on up there, huh? Okay. We go in on up. Should we check out the lights to see if there's anything special about them? Maybe they need sure, to be licked like an ice cream cone? You know, <laughs> sure. if you lick these lights, you'll get some kind of special powers. So. <laughs> I better, I better give it a try. One. Somebody lift me up. Excuse <laughs> me, guys. No, we can, we can head up to that second floor. Okay. All right. Always to the left. That's courtesy. Uh, or and it will uh, hop up each stair. You know, instead of climbing, it'll just pop. Ooh, this one's got cool lights. As you make your way 
Ta -da. Downtown. To <laughs> making my way downtown tomorrow. Sorry. Um, as you make your way to the top of the stairs, you come into a very large uh, circular room, almost identical to uh, the downstairs portion, except where the stairs stood on the lower floor, uh, it is replaced by this almost pool of glowing something that looks very similar to the magic shell that's covering the main spire uh, in the center of the city. And your arrival cues a deep, very neutral toned voice. Why have you come here intruders? Uh, we're here to save the day. Yep. We're here to end Oral's curse. Oh, yeah, that too. Possible. Well, and to destroy the, the, the energy source. We're here to destroy the energy source. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have led with that, Oral. <laughs> but he asked us what we're here for, Jakuli. What else are we going to oh, say? Boy. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, is the voice coming from something or is it just in our heads? It's 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 abs it's audible. It's not like within mm. your heads. Um, you can hear it. Where it's coming from, um, <clears throat> can't really tell, but it is not like an internal thing. Um, I am the guardian of Yatharin. It is I who protect the citizens of this one great city and protect it so that it may endure until its salvation. I am afraid I cannot let you alter anything as it stands now. Then do your best to stop us. I start looking around the room. Is there anything of note? What's this thing in the middle here? Uh, it appears to just be like a large column. Uh, your kind of bearings of it is that it is probably the, the spire uh, on top of the building from which the beam is heading to the largest tower um, in town. Uh, and okay. as you do so, the kind of pool, if you will, uh, kind of churns um, dramatically, like a like a bathtub that's being rocked. Um, Ooh, I jump in. No. Okay. And <laughs> as Jatuli challenges the disembodied voice out from the magical blue goo, if you will, <laughs> a huge blue creature just kind of forms and just a salad. big stat big dramatic steps as it makes its way into the room and the voice the black sabbath it's the blue sabbath all the, right the voice once again says this is your last chance adventurers allow this great place to remain until its salvation or be destroyed well, that's not really a choice. Uh, Frogs are the next. I'm, 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 I'm like, I, I'm mostly looking for. Is there like a switch or a door or like something to like shut off the thing? Is there a button? Uh, is that I'm, I'm mostly ignoring the monster. Go ahead. I have and... a Jatuli. <laughs> Go ahead and give yeah. me. Give me an investigation check. Oh boy, and that's exciting. It's going to, given the current circumstances, you're not going to, if there is something, you're not going to be able to cover like the entire room. In no, 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 no. It's fine. I know. Initiative, whatever. That's yeah. fine. I, I'm just, I'm looking. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, go nothing. ahead and, go ahead and give I, me a I, roll I and a I can nine. give you an idea of. No, I, I rolled a nine. Okay. So we're gonna divide we're gonna divide this up into like sections, right? So we're gonna say 
you checked like over here, like this kind of quarter of it um, by the stairs and found nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, we're gonna, just going to keep everybody in the same initiative order just for it to be easier. Uh, yep. Kelrath's going to scatter and look for a button of some sort. He was last in initiative, so we're going to start at the top with Balder next. And this big, giant, blue, Mike was hairless Mike Wazowski, or uh, Sully Sullenberger looking thing. Um, it looks like a frog a little bit. Yeah, that kind of makes it Definitely super frog cool. man. It's like a Ninja Turtle a little bit, but like drawn real. <laughs> From the sequels. Michael Bay is going to sue somebody. Makes Chatuli hungry to see a big frog. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and attack him. You'll finally be able to answer the question, what blue tastes like. Yeah, right. Oh, well, yeah. I'm That's excited. my next character. Does anybody taste purple? <laughs> <that? laughs> Dirty no, 20, it, we natural know what purple 20. tastes like. Yes. Ooh. All right. Purple taste is purple drank. Purple nice. Drink. So uh, the time rush Gatorade. That shit is fire. First one, uh, ten points of regular, six points of psychic. Then the critical is oh. uh, nineteen more points of damage. Big damages. Okay. Uh huh. Comes in a weird number. And then I'm okay. going to dodge. Yeah. As a bonus action. Dodge him. <laughs> you can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a blue sled. Uh, That's right. right. <laughs> Very good. Um. So. It's now the monster's turn, and you're dodge what? I get disadvantage on everything? Yeah, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Ooh. It is going... What is it? Alright. It's going to be a 20 and a 6... Oh, no, wait, hold on. It's going to be a 16 with the first one. So no. And a 23 with the second one. I rolled two fifteens. Uh, Twenty-three'll hit. And nine. Uh fourteen piercing damage. Or slashing, I'm sorry. Alright. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Hold on. So you said fourteen points of damage? Yes. Slashing, and then I need Constitution saving throw. Uh, fucking shit. Uh, Eleven. As it slashes at you, you're gonna feel this burning, like sensation. Not only like where it contacts your skin, but like internally through your bloodstream as you feel you've become infected. Your maximum hit points is reduced by 10. Ooh. Slam. The target cannot regain hit points. Ever. <laughs> You're dead. And that, yeah, that's it. Uh, you can't regain hit points, your maximum hit points is reduced by 10. Uh, all right. Uh, she thinks, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Dude, I didn't know you were going to roll a 12. Um, I like wanted to roll a 12. I mean, <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> Adding to the tension. If you ever want, get, get the tension if the you ever want me to use Flash of Genius or something like that, I guess Still, I, it's too late. Flash, to of, Flash of Genius wouldn't have gotten it done. Um, oh. All right. Um, sorry, Henry. Oh. Uh, Chatuli. Chatuli. All right. In a fit of rage, run <laughs> over and start chopping at him. Okay. You goddamn frog. 
Uh, 18 to hit. Yep. 22 to hit. Yes. 19 to hit. Yes. Excellent. Here come the choppies. So 11 damage. 16 damage. And 11 damage. So as you make these firm and true strikes with your axes, every strike, the creature glows brighter, the pools grow dimmer, as if on a kind of fluctuating scale. Um, what All else right. you got? Is that it? I Hold on. Yeah, there we go. I take... I take my uh, my eagle barbarianness seriously, and I walk away from him as I do so. <laughs> okay. I have feathers, yeah. I've got to move around. All right, Orin. So I was originally thinking about using this spell on someone else, but I think I'm going to use it on Orin because it grants bonus AC. Uh, Orin's armor is going to light up. And basically, it's going to give him the effects of haste, the spell. Okay. Third level spell. And so, that'll and give him an additional action on each of his turns if he can attack. So, he's going to come over here and attack on that action, trying to get, do the disadvantage goodies. All right. And. Yeah. Punch 18. Salad yes. Redness. I like awesome. how you shorted to the disadvantage goodies. Yes, the disadvantage goodies. Uh, non thunder damage. All right. Right to the whatever I can hit on that. It looks really big. I'm probably like just like giving it a stub toe. Yeah, right on its flipper. Wow. Yep. Punching it in a wart. Um. All right. Uh. Is that is that it? Yeah. Uh. That's it. Cause I use. No, nope, I didn't use my bonus action. Um, I will have the homunculus servant um, also attack. Okay. And that'll be that's twenty-three <coughs> to hit. So big damage. It's gonna be proficiency bonus five force damage. Big damage. Very nice. Um, Man. The slide barely moves. Um, it too seeming to be magically kind of created not so much an actual living breathing thing um all right very nice uh it has disadvantage too yeah yeah on everyone but or okay all right uh kelroth the search continues um mm, i mean all i'm gonna do is like nick it with a little axe i will continue to search okay well i mean yeah um yeah yeah for now okay uh can i search the column thing like that seems sure. like it's important sure uh go ahead and give me uh perception investigation whichever one i mean i'm way better at perception so perception it is 24 okay. uh on the kind of back side on the opposite side from where everybody is there seems to be almost this dial um, along with a little strip of seemingly the magic pool uh, or at least the same material within um, traveling up the column and the little dial uh, you want to you found it I'm not going to presume for you to have done anything about it on the column there's yes. like a dial yeah uh, um... it's going to actually hold on just to give you an idea like yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. That's why I can't see them right now. Uh, like, is it a big dial? Does Is there any written information on the dial? Does it got... There isn't. Um, it, from your brief time during, you know, your turn, you're going to be kind of hurried. Uh, it is the only thing you've seen on this column. And from what you've seen, there aren't, um, like, any kind of trails of the magic blue ether anywhere else. Uh, okay, is 
is it a like a flick of the switch or it's, you have to like turn something it's a it's a made of the same kind of really fine stone um uh-huh. and it's a wheel probably about like this big I because you know turns are like six seconds I imagine this is like you know in the movie where they're frantically searching for something and then I see it and I go ah, and just turn it and as you do the blue trail from the floor that goes to the ceiling that's right in front of you uh, goes exceptionally dim the lights within the tower Ooh, a dimmer switch. almost fade into entire darkness and the pool seems to almost evaporate into nothing. The blue slad disappears, and the voice comes back. I cannot allow you to continue to destroy the guardians of this city. I will be ready for you when we meet again. Yeah, right. Got a little Australian in there. And <laughs> yeah, right. As it gets yeah. dark, the, that kind of sensation that you felt, that like tangible electricity from something so magical and so powerful uh, when you walked up to the main spire seems to have dissipated. Um, you just hear me call from around the column I found a switch. This. <laughs> it seems. <sighs> God. It seems to have I can't gotten see rid anything, of the big so. monster. I can't see you guys or the monster, so I just I pressed the switch. It made um, the monster disappear. Did did I heard a voice? Did it say something about the guardians? Guardians of the galaxy? No. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, not a plan. It's barely even a concept. Uh, I come back around. I'm like, I I think we did it. It looks like it shut off. Let's go shut off the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds like he wants us to fight more. Which which, you know, that's cool. Oh, wait, actually, let let me see what kind of magical spells I have that last longer than like a minute. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can give us some buffy dues. As you, we're gonna go into more fights. As you kind of figure out and look around a little bit, um, Sindri slowly makes his way upstairs. I uh, didn't put Sindri and give him a token in this map. Uh, He's a wizard, wizard right? Yes. Wizard token. So I got it. So Sindri eventually kind of makes his way up and is is simply in awe of everything. Even for those of you who are not practicers of the arcane, um, it's it's really clear how how powerful and how inherently magic this entire city uh, is. And for somebody who has really dedicated, or at least attempted to dedicate parts of their lives and potentially almost died to kind of find this place, um, even for as rough of a shape and as exhausted as he seems, um, he looks almost like Oren does on an everyday basis, just genuinely like overwhelmed with ex- excitement and curiosity. And he's just going to kind of make his way around uh, the magic pool, kind of making notes in a little book uh, as you... Uh, continue to do whatever it is that you're doing. So he's just going to kind of do this in the background. Oren will say to Sandri, he'll say, wouldn't it be great if we could bring the the teachers, the, the professors from Silvery Moon up here and let them do some research on this place? Uh, as he says that, and Sindri's furiously scribbling in his, in his book, we don't have to bring them here, Oren. We're gonna we're gonna be the teachers when we get back. No, nobody's seen anything like this. They they can't they can't keep us out now. We're gonna we're gonna take over that school, and I can't wait. Like, what do you think this is? And he just kind of starts going off, and you can see his little kind of gnomish mind turning over and over again with every little kind be, of thing he sees. Or it'll be walking around with them as they discuss the. Uh, uh, do I hear this conversation? 
it just sounds like two kind of magic nerds really getting into like the guts of like a conversation um each well there's their... something he said specifically that i want to know if i heard that or not okay um because he said they can't keep us out uh it, did I hear that, or did Dustin hear that? Yes. Um, I'm going to you... say, uh, not to pry, but that implies that y you were kicked out? They didn't think I had enough experience to, to be a teacher, so I figured what better way than to sign up with the Arcane Brotherhood and, and find this, this place that nobody's ever made this discovery. I can't, they won't make me go back to being a student. And just... Every moon is full of all sorts of uh, old people that just they're well past their prom. So so we need to we you know we're we're the ones making all these discoveries. So I, there's so I, much to unpack here. You. Um, I'm gonna say that we have a very specific priority right now, and that is to prevent Icewind Dale from being destroyed, or like becoming a frozen landscape of desolation uh so i feel like if anyone wants to do any research here we'd at the very least need to deal with this very immediate problem yes sure of course and he puts his book away. i'm i'm sorry i just we we tried so hard to get here and then the whole thing with Dazan and then with avarice and then the caves i i've been trapped in those caves forever and i just wanted to come out and like see this place look at it um, sure, sure, he's sure. Just super yeah, it's excited. fine. Um, he he puts his quill and his book away, and still is kind of, you know, mesmerized by it, but is not like diligently taking notes and doesn't want to seem like he's holding up the party as the kind of weakened, one, two, three, fifth wheel of this endeavor. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll get. Let's go. Okay. It really walks up and puts his hand on top of Oren's head. <laughs> Let's go. I'm okay, gonna. Shishuli. I'm gonna use an action okay. and cast the spell, Death Ward, on uh, myself. Okay. It lasts for eight hours, so that should be enough for this adventure. <laughs> uh, if at any point I would drop to zero hit points instead of dropping to zero, I drop to one instead, and the spell ends. Uh, you can't be death fingered either, right? Finger of death. Yeah, if I would be targeted with any effect that would cause instant death, uh, uh, it is negated. I'm all right. <laughs> Your bloody arm's off. No, I'm fine. <laughs> think I'll go nobody, <laughs> nobody will finger me today. I think I'll go for a walk. Um, all right. Uh, as you make your way uh, back down to the ground floor of the tower and outside, um, that that physical like kind of intangible which is perfectly two words that you put together to make a sen fucking coherent thought um the the like electrical sensation that kind of thing in the air um inherent with this just magnificently magical power uh, of the city has has dissipated it is not uh like hair standing on their end all that kind of thing that taste of ozone in your mouth um it feels just like a darkened corner of any major city you've ever been to in your lives. Um, the only difference is the ghost-like figures of the city, instead of being these kind of transparent apparitions, seem to be a little more solid and tangible. And as they continue to go about their metropolitan lives, every couple of moments you wonder if you heard them speak this time. Every 60, 80 feet of walking through the city, you wonder if that one over there noticed you. Did you make eye contact with one? Did one of them seemingly move out of your way as you made your way through the city? And as you head to the second uh, tower, uh, as you get closer, the people go back to more of a kind of ethereal, ghost-like 
kind of structure to them. And that tangible electric feeling in the air is once again there. Um, you can taste it like you licked a car battery. Uh, your hairs stand up on their ends. And the large sound of the you know, actual apparatus working and projecting a beam, uh, which only three remain for the large tower. And as you make your way outside, uh, let's go ahead and go put this back. Oops, hold on. I genuinely am more on the side of Chatuli now when it comes to magic and my view of Orin and 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 his little friend. I'm like, mm, you mean? It sounds like they're gonna. I'm like, I'm like, I think I know who the villains for our next campaign are. <laughs> It's for the or great of the. It's for the good of science. It's for the, it, the burning the world down. It's it's we when nobody's it's we will save so many lives. So oh, Aura never said anything about killing people. He just said there was too many old people that in the college that you know were just there because they were old and had. I mean, I'm 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 half elf. I I I grew up in Silvery Moon. As yeah. You make your way <laughs> up to the other tower and the overwhelming power of the structure and the magical energies contained within um, really get you amped up again. You, you feel genuinely alive. And the very neutral and calm voice once again can be heard. You continue at your own peril. For I am the accumulated knowledge of the most powerful civilization to ever exist. You trespassers are nothing more than an inconvenience and shall fall to the natural defenses of this one great city. Turn back now and you shall be allowed to leave. Continue and the defenses of the city will get you. You're the most powerful civilization to ever fall as well. And you're still dust. Um, I, I can't believe this, but I think this voice, this whatever this is, this is I think it called you a coward, Jatuli. Can you believe that? What? Yeah, that's good. That's basically what it said. Let's, I think we should get it. Chatuli <laughs> is not having that. <laughs> <laughs> they that said disembodied you... <laughs> voice called you a coward. Get it. They said you look like you look like jumps. <laughs> Chatuli um, just dashes off with both axes out. Not a coward. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah, let's get it. For some reason, dude, dude. <laughs> I got you. Just full sprint. I'm pushing this. I'm pushing us forward. Let's get this job done. Okay. I feel <laughs> sorry for anybody who runs into Jatuli at <laughs> current state. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is, you know, this is uh, the Barbarian's version of, like, ascended Super Saiyan. You're uh, an ascended oh, rage. Yeah. I, I pushed so, him. Little monkey tails come out right now, and I'm pissed. I pushed you beyond. Yeah, I don't believe it's like little... Dragon Ball Z quote for you there. Um, of rage right now. Uh, all right. Um, it'll take me three adventures, Manny, to what? finish my rage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna be raging in Eberron. Um, yeah. <laughs> holler at your boy about Thanksgiving. See if I calm down. Here. You're like a completely new character. You're like, I'm angry and I don't know why. His rage is so strong, it rips tears through the space time. Yeah, in, so in, into another setting. To <laughs> um, You're going to punch this being in the past. And in another realm. Um, all right, so, you know, 
Apparently, the disembodied voice questioned Jatuli's like strength and resolve. Um, you're still on the outside, um, and you can. I think we're rage charging towards the next tower. Kelroth is well, going to say that he hears something inside laughing at Jatuli, which is bad. <laughs> you don't do that. I, I, I know you can't understand the language you're speaking, but they definitely said your name, and there's a bit of giggling. <laughs> I thought I saw some pointing as well. You do that classic one foot kick the door open? No. Uh, you shouldn't do that to Jatuli. Don't provoke him. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, Dustin is not uh, Karoff. Karoff wants and to get the job done. And you think Orin? You think Orin is going to be the villain of the next campaign? <laughs> I'm trying to save the world here, or at least Icewind Dale. And Orin's trying to feed his appetite of curiosity. <laughs> oh God! That, yeah, that doesn't sound. That is not comparable, my good sir. <laughs> Mister Wan thinks you want to lick things. I want to save lives. We are not the same. Um. <laughs> All right, you guys going to make your way inside? Yes. All right. Bash that door open. All right. As you make your way inside, the interior of this room is completely identical to the one uh, previously. The same magic energy, uh, that sensation, still exists, just as it did in the previous tower before Kelroth found the switch upstairs. And as you scan about the floor, all that appears are two long swords just seeming abandoned by their previous owners as they just lie on the floor with the same kind of blue glowing intensity as the uh, lights in the room and as the pool from the second floor of the previous tower as well as the beams towards the main spire in uh, the center of the Netherese necropolis. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, everybody wants to talk about barging in the door, blah, blah, blah. Till Lord the... is just like running as fast as he can to keep up with everyone his short little legs. I just smash right through that door. And just yeah, merge, forever forever walking keep... through that door. Sindri's going to duck himself over on the stairs, um, taking uh... notes the entire time. I'm just in a fucking fury mood. Run over to this sword and kick it. <clears throat> it's going to go sliding. And as you kick it, the lights go bright very suddenly and then kind of back to their normal sense as the sword kind of spins, skittering across the very smooth stone floor and clanging into the wall that supports the stairs to the second floor. I'll run up to it and swing my axe at it over and over again. I am not a coward. It's the only thing I can see that's not my friends. At the third strike, the glow of the sword that accompanied its kick, its impact into the wall and your previous strikes is going to stay and kind of stay maintained despite despite not having been struck recently. Uh, the other one is also going to take a very arcane blue glow and suddenly they are going to jump up into the air floating by some potentially unseen wielder but in perfect fighting condition or position as you would expect from something pretty large, Jatuli size or bigger, um, wielding them. Uh oh. Uh, and we'll actually go ahead and take our break right here. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh. So, uh, so, 
second second tower these weapons that they found that eventually just don't like to be kicked have sprung to life potentially being wielded by some unseen assailant maybe they are inherently magic on their own uh, we will find out uh, when we come back on the other side of the break uh, it's 8.35. Uh, big thank you to uh, Lewis at Applied Karma for the sub again today. Hey, Wilson, for the sub and the gift subs. We really appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, to our new uh, subs, the beneficiaries of uh, Hey, Wilson's generosity, uh, welcome. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you stick around. Um, so it is 8.36. We're going to take about a 10-minute break. Uh, we'll come right back and see what is up with these magical weapons in the second tower of the uh, frozen necropolis. Uh, thank you for watching tonight. Hopefully you'll stick with us on the other side. And we will be right back. See you in a bit. All right, we are back. Thank you to everybody who stuck with us through our little break. Everybody has had uh, our show's version of a short rest. And before we left, uh, Jatuli kicking around the only objects in this tower, identical to the first, were two swords that lay just lay on the floor. Um, kick them, they had a glow. Uh, the lights flashed corresponding. Uh, and as he does so after a few times and a few axe strikes, uh, the swords come alive, uh, floating in air in a perfectly held and kind of very good uh, swordsman form, uh, if you will. And as the swords kind of pop to life, uh, Sindri instantly pulls out uh, his notebook and begins to write down. And uh, Zutoli, since you kind of initiated uh, this we'll start with you uh, in the initiative order with uh, this one magic sword floating in well the sword is real it is floating by magical means um, in front of you what do you want to do um, I'm gonna grab it by the handle okay and try to rest it to the ground <laughs> Is it just floating, or does it uh, look like it's like... It looks like it's being wielded by something invisible. Something. Okay. okay. So I'm going to try to rip it out of whatever it's holding. Okay. So. Uh, here we go. Mono ooh. e mono. 17. 17. Uh, if we do the same thing as initiative, I imagine your strength modifier is higher. I rolled a 17 straight up plus zero to strength. Oh, yeah. I got way higher than zero. Right. So as you snatch it out of the air, it doesn't feel like you wrested it away from something, but as you get a grip on it and kind of, you know, try to bring it in in you know kind of a swordsman form it's the sword itself seems or something seems to want to like pull itself out of your grip um to no avail obviously um but yeah so you've got this one and it seems to just be kind of a, like a literal mind of its own okay i'll take a bite right by where the handle is. Take a couple of snaps. Trying to bite the hand of whatever might be holding this thing. Okay. Um, as you bite at it, you don't feel anything gripping onto it, a hand, a, you know, a whatever. Uh, holding on to it uh, your teeth don't connect with anything until the actual sword uh, itself um, go I mean go go ahead and make a, a bite attack on the sword well, I'm not trying to bite the sword okay I was, I was just biting the vicinity of the sword in case there was an arm attached okay to it. so no you don't 
there, if you were to bite up and down the handle like a co cob of corn, uh, you would not feel anything. So it's, it's the best. It's the only thing I can think of. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't, it, there's, there's nothing. And even as you kind of, you know, corn on the cob action, um, this, something still seems to try to be pulling it away from you. <laughs> okay. At least now we've learned some things. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I got a hold of this thing, so... I guess that's that's my it's my action. It's in my grip now. Okay. Uh, all right, Orin. Zutuli's Orin got a hold of this thing. Um, one of the other ones is floating, kind of in its in its place. Given, I mean, Orin can't walk up. Anyways, the best he can get is here. Um, he doesn't want to send a firebolt at the other one because he would probably hit Zatuli. He, he's not very good at his name. So he's going to cast firebolt at the um, sword that's away from Zatuli. Okay. Uh, does 12 hit? It does not. I didn't, <laughs> didn't think it would. He will have his homunculus servant come to uh, basically where he is, or 30 feet away from it, and also try to attack. Okay. Which is a 27 to hit. Yo, the homunculus on it today for all six of its yes. force damage. Oh, hold on now. I got the highest draw possible. A five, uh, 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 nine. And it got nine. Wait, wait. Eight. Eight force damage. <laughs> Simmer highest down. draw possible. Simmer down. <laughs> Um, the homunculus hits it with force damage and it looks as if like an invisible sword strike was parried like ding and the sword kind of flipped around um, but still appears to be held by something or at least is in a perfect position as if it was held by something um, alright uh, Orin what else you got that is it I did not prepare to spell magic I uh, should have. Okay. I did not. All right. Uh, Kelroth. Um, I don't know how far I can make it. I'm going to run up the stairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, you uh, probably make it about a quarter of the way up. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go about here. And, and is there, like, a ledge or something? You can like see, over the... like, you, this, it's one big open room. You're not, like, in a in a stairwell. Like you're around the perimeter of the room, so you're above everybody, and you can see everything below you. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm gonna dash and run another quarter up. Okay. That's all I'm gonna do. All right. Uh, run up the stairs. Very good. Uh, Balder. All right. Uh. Baldur's not too excited about this. Uh, still kind of reeling from the previous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get the black song pie. <laughs> the pie. <laughs> Derek, you've been mine for three days. <laughs> uh, all right, not too bad. Twenty-four for the first one. Uh, yes. And then, um. Uh, 15 for the second one? Yes. Alright. So that's 11 points of regular, 4 points of psychic to a sword. I don't okay. know. What the hell not? Why the hell not? Um, and then uh, 8 more points of damage for the second one. It is not immune to psychic damage. Mm hmm. That's right. Take that sword. <laughs> I'm all up in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know. My hand's not on you when you think it is. It is a minus two to intelligence too. So I'm trying to figure out how this thing <laughs> fucking works. 
Um, and then I guess I'll bonus action melee attack with a 21. Yes. And that's uh, seven more points of damage. All right. Uh, it is the monster's turn. Uh, the one in front of... Um, so you're saying there's a monster there? <laughs> well, just in the mechanical sense. Unraveling, I'm, right? I just I want to say right now before I roll these dice that you all are my friends and I love you, and it's going to be okay. Oh. Whew. Okay. That's ominous. Um, Jatuli, twenty-one to hit. Barely. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm the lowest AC of the whole fucking party. 11, 20, 26. You're going to take 13 slashing damage as the blade just wheels around on you. Um, is that reduced 13? Yes. Ow, shit. Yeah. Um, it could have. No wonder you declared your love for me in advance. It would have been. It would have been a lot worse if uh, it it crits on 18 or higher. Um, and then it's 12 d12. Like I don't even have that many d12s. Um, so that's wow. what I Yeah. Um, all right. So that is that one. Uh, the other one. Uh, one of these, Manny. The other one's going to take its shots at Boulder. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, I don't think. Uh, 17 is not going to get it done, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, so it's going to take its shots at Boulder and miss. And uh, we are back to Jatuli. Back to me. Oh boy. Um. Well, I guess with I'm holding on to this thing, so with my free hand, I give it some chops. Okay. You're like parrying yourself. Ching ching. You like a one man sword fight? No, no. Uh, 27 to hit. Yes. Um, 18. Yes. And 17. Yes. All right, here we go. So 14 damage, 9 damage, and 14 damage. Okay. Um, you're going to win in the sword fight with yourself well done um and just really i don't know one hand brutalized the other hand i don't i don't know how to do this narratively but you know what i'm saying uh, hand you, your yeah. dominant hand kicked your free hand's ass um <laughs> so well done you won arm wrestling against yourself and uh the sword still is going to behave as if it has a mind of its own. It's going to come to its own defense, uh, trying to lessen the damage of your vicious strikes. Uh, that's going to be that. And Orin, now to you. Orin can now move the full distance to it. Okay. Um, he will hit this one with a thunder gauntlet. This time, hopefully, he doesn't roll terribly. Okay, 26 to hit. Yeah. Four. Nine thunder damage. Okay. And he's going to risk the possibility for uh, reaction attack to move and try to thunder gauntlet this other one as okay. well. Uh, it's going to... Uh... 19... 
to hit on that one. And you can you can Okay. Uh your nineteen does hit. Um, that is how I'm gonna put on damage. Uh seven thunder damage to that one. Okay. Um and then uh, oh go ahead. Okay. So it cr it crits on an eighteen. Um I rolled an eighteen. Awesome. Uh, all right, man. I, the one thing I, 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 love your, I love your enthusiasm, homie. <laughs> the one thing I hope to do. Well, guys, I'll see you in campaign two. No. <laughs> it's been a good time. Wait, hold on. That's a D20. Oh, this is what he meant. He's going to kill us all. That's a D20. That's why he was, was so lucky. certain about how many episodes. Wait, wait, wait. Lucky. I'm, I'm, I'm using that was the lucky. Case, I would have said tonight. <laughs> I'm using no, I, I, Manny. I'm using Lucky to make it re-roll that. Thing. Okay. I got. I'm sorry. You're good. I, I forgot You're that good. I had another use out of it. That's my last use though. Okay, fifteen. So it's still a twenty-two to hit. Oh, that's my see. I got twenty-two and C. So okay. that hits. Uh, that's okay. better than a crit. Uh, yes. Better than uh, twelve people. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I don't even have 12 D12. I was going to have to roll six twice. God damn. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, shit. It's still not good. Ugh. Um. Are we level 10? 37? We should level up. <laughs> 37. That did not feel good. We're uh, level 9, I think, right now. Orin is just under half hell. Oh, Jesus. I thought you were fucking dead. Okay. I'm going to go get my phone still. Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> I had uh, I had temporary HP from the defensive shield. So I had like non-temporary HP for that. And then I had like 69 hell. So now I'm at 41 hell. So... Or however. Oh, Orin's at 41 health. Hey, <sighs> I, I tried to take the make it disadvantage on you guys. Okay. Uh, boo hoo. <laughs> trying to trying to dig him out the arm. All right. I like for real. I thought you were dead. Um. All right. So you're gonna take your 37 damage and apparently not be that big of a deal about it. So no anxiety. No reason for anxiety for me. Um. All right. Cool. I was worried about the crit. But not the yeah. regular yet. Yeah, dog, that would have been bad. I rolled 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 4 um, on, four, on 4D12. So, yee. Um, all right. Um, ha glad you're still with us. Anything else? Uh, the homunculus servant. That's right. Okay. It'll attack. But I guess the one in front of Balder again. Uh, okay. And that'll be an 18 to hit? Yes. Awesome. This time it did seven force damage. Okay. All right. Very and that'll good. be it. And now Kelroth making his mad dash up the stairs. You gonna finish it you gonna finish it up to the second floor or are you gonna um. Um. Let Let me just throw this up there, just to let you know that they are not doing well. Wait, what are we? What a what a what a. Just the little, you know, the thing, the closest thing we do to bloodied. Oh, oh, the swords are bloodied. Yes. Got it. Um. Are Are my companions also bloodied? Uh, Orin technically is. He has a high AC, but if both of them hit him, he's down. So. I am, but there's nothing I can do about it, so. <sighs> okay, but the swords look like bent and damaged, right? Uh, yeah, one of them's not fighting Jatuli as hard, and the other one looks like having a hard time keeping its perfect form. Um, it's drooping a little bit. It, it it happens to all swords, but 
you know, it's just like it's had, a lot, I, it's had a lot on its mind. See, I'm just so bad at hitting things. Do I really waste my energy doing that? I also see Carol's mind. I didn't realize these things were gonna like shish kebab my friends uh was like turning off the tower turns off the magic so if the if there's baddies they disappear so that's why i decided to run up the stairs but now i have to worry about my friends um <sighs> okay or Orin does have healing magic yeah uh, yeah, I just I have I have such limited spell slots. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, but they look really damaged, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, Ugh. like that's like, I'm not an attacker. I wouldn't really. Ugh. Um. Okay. What's sorry? What's the initiative order? It's me, Jatuli, then who? The swords. It's after you, uh, it's Balder. The swords, oh. Jutuli. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, ah, shoot. Well, okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Guiding bolt. Okay. Oh god, my four spell slots. Um, ugh. Okay, I'll just do a level one guiding bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, I'll do level two. Okay, level two guiding bolt. Okay. okay. Uh oh, actually, no, no, no. This one's stronger. Okay, so level two guiding bolt at the one that's in front of Boulder. Okay. Oh, for God's sake. 14. 14 does hit. It does? Yes. Okay. Oof. Jeez Louise. Okay. Let's see. Half of this would be like... Okay, let's see if I do half damage. Uh, okay. Hiya! You can do it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, 19 points of radiant damage. Okay. And if it is still alive, uh, on the next attack roll made against it is with advantage because it is now glowing in a mystical dim light. As so, Balder, you can now advantage hit it if it's still alive. You hit it, it becomes you know completely outlined in this glow, and yeah. just as it seems to grow, glow its brightest. It falls back to the ground, lifeless, clanging Ow. on the floor. And as it does so, uh, the lights and everything in the room get even dimmer. Okay. Uh, right. um, well, I, I don't know if that counts as killing something. At this point, I still consider myself to have only killed Volan Harpoon. <laughs> Well, and, and I'm going to use my object. movement. I'm going to use my movement to go another quarter up the stairs. Okay. Uh, not dashing this time, obviously, since I cast the spell. Um, and I'm going to hope Balder will be able to finish off the last one. That's my turn. Okay. Um, at this, I point, did something. Yes, you did. Very nice. Yay! Um, as you get to this point in the stairwell, you are going to be able to just kind of peek, you know, above the floor. Of, it turns into a slide and I go all the way down. Uh, it <laughs> looks exactly as the one <laughs> prior. And huh? the pools and everything that you had seen glowing um, appear dimmer than they did uh, when you first stepped into the other tower and when you stepped into Kay. this one. Okay. Right? But the room is identical, yeah? Yes. As uh, I'm like, I think the lip. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. All right, uh, do, 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 do. Balder, back to you. Uh, the one sword that Jatuli has uh, in his hand that he's beating up um, 
Orin right next to him, the one that was in front of you, fallen lifelessly to the floor. All right. Um, can I get like a clean hit on the sword? The uh, tool is holding. Uh huh. All right. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and attempt that. Okay. So Tully basically just kind of probably turns his body towards you um, like you're trying to break a board. Yeah, he holds it flat mm -hmm. out and just <sighs> butter just like kicks it or chops uh, it. So a 17 and an 18. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Sword no hit back. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Um, so for the first one, it is 18 points of damage, okay. six of it being psychic. Oops. And then yeah. eight more points of damage on top of that. Okay. So as you smash this thing, um, it no longer seems to be putting up a fight as if like parrying its moves your moves on its own and eventually it's just going to fall heavy especially in Jatuli's hand clang to the floor um, as Jatuli basically now just holds a a longsword excellent and oh. then I'm going to take the rest of my movement and how high how vertical is the stairwell right there if, next to Kelroth? Uh, where Kelroth is is probably Kelroth's probably fifteen feet. Um, oh, that's psh, off nothing. the floor. Nothing. So I just go from here and then kind of nimble foot up the wall, and I'm standing next to. Kelroth now. Oh, and, like, bimbly, bimbly like a cat. Um, you probably like literally walked up the ceiling, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, just, basically. <laughs> just just, just, just kind of like do 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 do. <laughs> just flex on everybody. Um, so, in your lightning quick monk ways, in which you dispatch the sword, leaving Jatuli holding um, a long sword, and instantly turn around and flex on everybody by walking like straight up the wall. Uh, with your back to the floor and eventually just kind of up and over. Um, after a couple of seconds, the lights in the room just boom, out. Darkness. The feeling of electricity and power generated by this structure is also gone. And suddenly, even through the walls outside, you hear... the sounds of city life like a bustling and a kind of you know energy that a that a living city has with especially with a lot of people that kind of just buzz and background sounds of a city a large one being lived in and once again the voice comes back I have warned you multiple times, and yet you continue on this path. As you continue along, please look the citizens in their eyes and know that all of these lives will be lost should you continue. It's not the lives that are lost that we're concerned about. It's the lives that we save. You are selfish and foolish, like all powerful mages before you. Also, like, these people aren't alive. They're like freaking ghosts or something. Like, the city is, like, dead. Yeah, I'm behind Cal Ross, all, like, hyping him up. Yeah. <laughs> listen to the life cleric, y'all. He knows what I mean, he's talking like, about. I mean, like, I, I, like, listen, like, I, like, if these people were alive and begging for their lives and we were attacking them, I'd have some real moral quandaries about all this. But they're like dead ghosts in a dead city underground from an ancient civilization that faded from existence thousands of years ago. 
like the Nevermore album, A Dead Heart. And so. their, th- their, their city is a weapon of mass destruction that's potentially going to destroy all of our land. I'm sorry, the choice is kind of clear. Um, <laughs> Fuck them hard. <laughs> from from Karoth's perspective, anyways. Fuck him. I'm gonna go pick up the other long sword. Okay. And kind of look him, look down the blade, see how straight it is, and kind of feel the heft in my hand. Do they feel? Do they feel viable. They feel uh, very well constructed, and even after the kind of ambient magic of the room has faded uh holding on to them there is this slight like residual kind of magical feel you know feeling that you get by holding it slight little spark slight little you know ooh. i'll put my axes in my backpack and take take the swords okay Spin them around a couple of times. We will kill them with their own weapons. This will be excellent. Oh. I look over at Kelroth. Do you want a bigger axe? Uh, do you have something like regular size? Because I've got this shield that's pretty good. I should keep the shield. You can't one hand this regular axe. Yeah, no. Axe. no, 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 no. What, what about the? the sword is it That's my sword oh okay um <laughs> I, I, now that i can see up on the second floor is it all faded like was the, just drawing the swords and yeah to... the pools have gone dormant mm-hmm. the little bead that basically went on the back side of the central column that you could see from right where you are poking your head uh, above the floor has gone and uh like I said, once again, everything's dark. Um, and most importantly, that kind of real, tangible feeling um, seems to be gone just as it was in the last tower uh, when you flip the switch. Um, okay. Uh, can I just... I'm just going to run up there, do a quick scan of the room. Is there a switch that needs flicking? I, I don't want to be tricked. The same switch exists on this column, Uh um, but the parts leading up to it and above it, where it was on the wall, aren't glowing. Okay. All right. Well, very well, then. I I think we did it. On to the next one. Wait, actually, wait, 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 wait. How is everyone doing? Do we need... Can we? Should we take a rest? Like, what's the... What's our limiting capacities here? Oren doesn't have any hit dot left. Um, and don't you only does... recover half your hit dice when you long rest? That's technically what the rules say in the rulebook. Uh-huh. I have never been at a table that actually played by that. I ever. Well, yeah, I know. It's one of those weird... Okay. It's just one of those weird things where it's like... Anyways, this this is a different. I, thing. Um, it's okay, so course. so I just, no, 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 it doesn't it doesn't really matter at this point. I don't think the point is, do because like I'm at full hit points, so I don't need a short rest. I just need a long rest if I want more spells. So basically, I'm asking if other people want a short rest or a long rest, or if we should just plow through this. Because obviously, the more we push ourselves and the reason we run out, it's going to get more dangerous, etc. With this person, this being sort of knows about us, would it be smart to try to rest? Like long rest? I'm half, I'm half up and half down, depending on your. <laughs> or not, half up and half. I, I down. do have four spell slots that I can use cure wounds with. They're all first and second level, but. Um. Can, that. Or, you know, if anyone has any extra hit by, obviously that would work out well. Do we want to try and do the next one and evaluate from there? Are we feeling yeah, strong enough? So. 
Yeah. I have. I don't like, know if strong enough is a good term, but I feel like we can enough. handle it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we can handle it without like character deaths. Yeah, I have. I still have seven spell slots left, but I'm holding on to them as long as I can because of probable inevitable big boss fighter. You know, the voice speaking to us, wanting to like materialize and fight us or something. Okay. Um. All right. If you leave this one, yeah. Let's we 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 rage march to the next one. Okay. As you make your way through the streets of the city, it has an audible sound to it, like a hustle and a bustle. Oh. You were and a bustle. You were yeah, both. Um, uh. <laughs> As you make your way, you are very keenly aware that people have met direct eye contact with you. One or are two... Are they still insubstantial, or are they... Yes. Okay. Um, not nothing, but not something. Um, some of you may have even believed that you physically bumped into one traveling throughout the city as you've been there for a bit of time now um, you've grown somewhat accustomed and perhaps even believe that they your interactions are illusionary perhaps but you've taken less caution to avoid them like you would any other common being in the streets of an urban center and you feel as maybe even if you bumped into one, some of them have made eye contact. You may have even heard murmuring um, about you in a language that you can't understand. And Nobody likes a murmur. <laughs> and as you make your way to the third one, the sense of power and all of the tangible things um, return. And outside the door, the voice once again comes to you. If you will not listen to me, then listen to the last voice of reason that you may yet to hear. Mom? <laughs> Mom, five more minutes. I just want to keep playing D&D &D with my friends. Uh, so you stand outside. The voice gives you your attempt to, hey, hey, Hear this person out. I mean, okay. No. I'm listening. Okay. You gotta go inside. Just, oh. Yeah, um, hanging outside. I don't, you guys, I have to say, I'm not liking this. It feels like we're gonna have to make a choice. And I don't play Dungeons and Dragons to have emotions and feelings and immoral quandaries. This is too much for me, <laughs> bro. Everyone is going to be. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! Straight up, I thought not we were just here to have time. a good time. I thought we were just gonna step on some monsters. Well, I I open the door. I step in first, like a not coward. Wow, and... nice. <laughs> <Dude, laughs> as you walk in, um, the interior appears just like any other uh, that you've been to. This is now your third one. Um, the same three lamps and nothing on the floor. No spectral beings, no inanimate objects, just the empty floor and a stairwell the same as the others. I feel like I should enter rooms more often. Um, first, that is. You have the perception power. <laughs> uh, I also have a shield. Um, oh, actually, my armor class isn't the highest, but I, I do have a shield. Uh, is the lights dimmer than the other rooms they that we previously entered? They are the entered? same as any time okay, okay. you enter. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, let's find the switch up the stairs. Okay. Oops. I'm ready for the big bad or uh, the big voice because it was saying it was going to talk to us. But we'll Orin, see. Orin's getting really tired of the stairs, so he's actually going <laughs> to walk up, you know, the railing. He's just going to like stand on it and 
walk up the railing because the stairs you know that's they're tall for him like for you all yeah they're stairs but for Oren, it's like uh the ledge is is like the handicap ramp yeah it's it, it's just not fair this it's, isn't it, this it, isn't it, known it, friendly. it's just a little easier yeah yeah <laughs> So as you all make your way to the top of the stairs, you once again find uh, the second floor of the tower with the floor hey. burbling, burbling, with magical energy. And this time, a different voice can be heard. Um, I'm going to do the voice, and then I'll put the image up in the Discord, because the image, uh, the art for this is, is cool as shit. Um, oh. Sorry, I was like... Just Discord. Put it in the Discord. Okay. So as you make your way into the room, uh, out from behind the central pillar, a an enormous figure, uh, dwarfing Jatuli both in size and in just height. Uh, about eight feet tall at the shoulders in black spiky uh, plate armor where the head should be it is a glass jar filled with liquid and floating in the jar appears a brain oh no it's Krang. So. Dimension X. Um, that's what it looks like. I just popped it in the Discord. Oops. I can't move in the thing real quick. Huh. Oh, dude, that's badass. Yeah. That's why I was like. I was, pretty cool drawing. Yeah. I was like, you guys had to see that. That's why. So it's going to step out. Oh, and yeah, so just okay. kind of slowly saunter over. It should. It should have made a helmet, but. Hey, it, it looked pretty cool. I'm the only one who saunters. Uh, it's sashay. It's sashay's over there. You happy? Um, Here, let's 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 make hey. it eight, nine feet. There we go. I am the Archmage Veridona. I once served this great city, and now I maintain the protections that protect the lives, what they may be of the once question, great question, sorry. and powerful citizens of Yatharin. Is is it corporeal or is it like Yeah, like it's the it's a thing? it's a thing. It is it is a thing. Like did it teleport in here or did uh, we, it we step, came up and we saw it? You came up and it saw it. It stepped out from the shadows for what it's worth for how you know okay. big it is. Um but everything about it okay. says that it is corporeal, it is very present in okay, okay, front okay. of you. It's huge. I wasn't sure if it was like a holographic image or something. No. Because these guys seem to be somewhat tech oriented. Uh, is it speaking common? Yes. Do all of us understand it? Okay, yes. okay, okay. Cool. That's all I need to know. Sorry, thank you. My rage goes away then. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it comes out very confident, obviously, in its, its stature and its size and puts its sword down and kind of leans on it. Like one would the bar if it was going to try to talk to somebody. I know you believe what you do is right, and you believe those that shall be helped by your actions here will outweigh the lives of those here. But I assure you, the mathematics is simply not on your side. Uh, this city and what you see of it and what remains of it is all that remains of the netherese in this world. The things oh, that inhabit this city are worth the lives of millions of your kind. Well, that... Oh, this guy's pissing that, me off, y'all, right? He, first very, he talked about math, and now he said that? Oh my god, he does not know how to negotiate at all. Not with me. How dare you bring up numbers? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, math? <laughs> Fucking goddammit. I, I don't know math either. I don't even know how many zeros that is. And there's <laughs> nothing here telling me I'm worthless. And if I told you it was six, you'd still not be sure if that was a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, sorry, we don't. I I mean, I don't interrupt him. I, he can continue talking. And it says these things that are, you know, obviously very pointed and, you know, kind of disrespectful. Um, it says it without clearly any malice of tone. At least it does so very matter of fact and very just direct as it stands there still making no threatening posture or anything but stands there as if it expects you to understand what it's saying and acquiesce to its point of view um <laughs> does it does it does this thing does it because it's the brain so it does it um does it genuinely think we believe like that we're gonna listen to it or believe it like does or is uh, it just like is it just stating things at our face like or like implying that we're too dumb to understand it You implied it wasn't threatening, but it is like it's trying to make us stop. More of like condescending the, doesn't mean it's threatening. Yeah, right, more right. but more of the the con like the emphasis on condescension from a place of it believes that it's the su it is clearly the superior being in this room. Um, it Ugh. believes in its you know yeah. netherese roots. And I mean, dude, they've fucking floating cities before this one, you know, sure, broke sure. down or whatever. I, I'm not saying um, that so it's powerful from, or whatever. Right. But... From its point of view, plus this, the brain in the jar and like on top of the helmed horror thing um, also gives it a little bit of a like. Eh. I'm going to ask a very meta question to the party. What is everyone's alignment? <laughs> Neutral. But right now it's eat brain. <laughs> Um, I listed Orin as neutral. He's really kind of more like good. He he likes to help people. Right. And I list him as neutral just because his curiosity does him to make sure. Him... Yeah, he's more just about curiosity than okay, cool. Yeah. And I'm neutral because if you, you can't lizard brain, tell yourself, well, I'm not probably not gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm chaotic good. And everything this guy says, like, triggers my chaoticness of the good part. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, like, where's the freedom? Where's the, you know, like, ugh. Um, wait, uh, can I, let me just, ugh, no, it's at disadvantage. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh I'm going to turn to the group, kind of put my back to him. I'm just going to say, listen, in our adventures, there have been lots of opportunities where I've stopped the group so that we could talk to something that we inevitably had to kill anyways. Should I even make the effort to communicate with this thing, or are we just going to smash it? Because it ain't saying anything good so far. It's not really like winning our... I'm completely ignoring it. <laughs> Orin is going to walk up to you. He's going to raise up and pat you on, like, the knee. He's going to pat you on the knee. <laughs> My knee. No, Kelrod, we're, we're not going to talk this out. <laughs> and, and he's going to say, Kelrod, they already called Shatuli a coward. He's not going to let that go. <laughs> okay, I mean, you're that's fair. Um... This thing oh. is lucky. <laughs> I'm I'm looking to Balder. I'm gonna say, look, you 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 are. You have strong opinions. You, you feel things. Do you think that we should? We're doing the right thing. Do you think we should like potentially destroy the remnants of these people? Who are are we really worthy of judging a whole race based on how prejudiced and self righteous they might seem to be? Slash their potential threat to our existence. Where I'm from, the dead um, hold sway over the living, but they don't hold it in a 
place of pride or you know um I, I don't know the word in, uh, just um it's more symbiotic yeah um the, they basically like you know kind of like i live this this is my experience kind of thing and not matter of you know hey i'm dead i'm still gonna live my life it's like hey you you're you're alive so you have a chance to live your life so it's you know he's definitely not okay i think we're all on the same page i just wanted to establish that this this is this is a learning moment. Instead of trying to confront the people, I'm 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 t chatting with our group. Uh, really turns I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to run around the column and look for that switch. Okay. That's I'm just gonna do that as okay. surprise. So all right, so we'll start with uh, Kelroth, who's gonna make uh, all right your little dash. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how far you'll let me go before we like start. Yeah. So I just move myself a little bit okay. this way to show that I'm. That's my goal. All right. Um, all right. Uh, then we'll move to Balder. Mm. Uh, Balder's going to move to. To be fair, you're a lot faster than me. You'd get there way before I could. I like yeah. I'm hobbling along because I'm still minus two on dexterity. Yeah, Kelroth and I are kind of. <laughs> but I still don't I keep know. trying to run I, for things. I mean, I exactly. <laughs> sure, like, yeah. I just see you keep running off. I don't. I don't yeah. know exactly what you're doing. So I guess I'm gonna move up to here. I'm not really gonna attack him. But at the same time, I'm not going to let him go after you. Yeah, that's why I didn't attack him. I'm like, all right, if he's not really going to stop us, I'm going to flick the switch and continue on our way, I guess. But anyways, I didn't communicate that. All right. Um, I like it. You're going to get in the way. Uh, get between it and um, Kelroth. Um, is that it? That's your, that's your, that's your turn. You're going to stand there and you're going to look yeah, intimidated. You're going to be action. cool about it. Like no, I'm gonna be cool about it. I'll hold my action. All right. Um, as you do so, um, the monster sees Kelroth making uh, a move for something. I know what you're trying to do, and while you may succeed, your success will not mean what you think it does. I am not a function of the power of this city. I am the remnants, freakish though I may be, of one of the archmages here, turning off this tower, no. lessening the shell around the spire, does not affect me. This is your last chance. Do not doom the greatest civilization to ever exist. For nomads, lizards, and folk not smart enough to live where crops can grow and life can thrive. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> and it's going to take a step back towards the switch. Oh. And stand there, um, daring you to go through it to get to it. Um, Shatuli. I mean, they're probably Is accepted. What's that? Is it my turn? Yes, sir. All right. I just go rage. And <laughs> I'll show you who's a simpleton. And I just run after him. Oh, boy. One X plus two X equals <laughs> ten. Yeah. I got two swords and both of them say fuck you. You got letters in my math, bro. Absolutely not. So I'm swinging on him, Manny. Okay. Um, totally bigger. What there particularly are you swinging at? The large, hulking metal f body or the brain 
from which the trash talking has come from. Because I'm going to eat it. Okay. And I'm going to gain all of his powers. <laughs> which is a well-known trope amongst my people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lizard folk tro uh, trope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, 25 on the first one. Yes. Crit on the second one. And 19 on the third one. All three. Ooh, boy, that's two big old crits for Jadidly today. We who. All right, so the first one is 15 damage. Okay. The second one is 12 damage. And the third one is is twenty eight damage. Through your unbridled rage at being condescended to, and to have your place of birth uh, shown such disrespect, you wail on this jar. And after the first strike, you can feel it give way so that the body doesn't sway with it. On the second one, you feel whatever is holding it together uh, loosen on the other side. And with the third uh, attack, you knock this jar clear off of the head and onto the floor, smashing the jar, spilling this thick red ooze all over the place and this brain flopping around like a fish. And with my bonus action, I eat it. Um, as you do so... This will be the coolest thing you've ever eaten. This... <laughs> that inherent like electric feeling walking into this room still um, persists, but like turned up to 11, mate and you feel unbelievably alive. I need you to make an intelligence saving throw for me, please. For eating the brain? Yes. I did 11 damage. What the fuck? To that brain when I ate it. Is Zatuli going to become fucking smart? Not and and by that I mean so. like really smart. I got a 14. Okay. I'll either be smart or dust. Let's see. You're going to take... Uh, oh, you're not resistant to psychic damage, right? While you're raging? No. All right, so you're going to take 13 psychic damage. And oh. suddenly... Everything about the world becomes immensely clear for about 60 seconds. It feels... 60 seconds? Oh. It feels as if you would be capable of answering any question asked of you as just your brain swells with information. Do we see this? Uh, he, yeah, like it's gonna, you know, uh, it's... I mean, obviously we don't know that he's thinking, but we whatever's see going on, but it's, react it's, violently. it's gonna be, yes, it's gonna be a very dramatic so reaction. We start spouting off, like, barometric pressure and temperature, <laughs> like, air temperature and stuff like that. We're all gonna know something's going I on. Um, my face, <laughs> up, like, flashlights just wee, and my brain is, like, kind of, like, bulging out from underneath my skull a little bit, and I'm just like, meh. Our, oh god uh okay i'm question and then i'm gonna do something question is yeah. the robot part still functioning yes. or did like is is it glowing red still and everything or the uh, orangey the, red color the the suit of armor is now just a black animated plate steel of suit of armor uh the jar okay. has fallen off um yeah the helm horror is still uh still a thing um, and as Jatuli eats this um, uh -huh. and takes this psychic damage, you feel as if there is now untapped potential within you that you may not understand quite yet. 
Me? Are we gonna yes. level up? Um, like, cause, 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 Jatuli won level in Warlock. Oh my god, I can bend the spoon? <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is seeing that there is no spoon. Um, this is like the coolest origin story for a warlock ever. <laughs> um, all right, so that's going to be... I ate a brain in a jar. <laughs> yeah, I ate a brain in a jar. That's fucking cool. Um, <laughs> all right, so as Jatuli kind of stands there, you know, like somebody's talking in a foreign language to him, uh, just overwhelmed by so many things... Um, uh -huh. Orin, it is your turn. The suit of armor still exists. But not its brain, it's in my belly. Does the suit of armor, it doesn't seem like it's active anymore with the it hasn't brain not. It hasn't fallen to the ground, and it's, its sword is in a position that if, you know, the lights had gone out, and it was no longer something. Um, it might have gone limp. It might not be holding its sword in such a way. Orin is going to try to sir. go up to the armor, jump in where the brain was, and see if he can get into inside of it. <laughs> yeah. Give me... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have to be dexterity because you're gonna have to shimmy in there, and you're kind of little. And you're wearing armor. Yeah, and you're wearing armor. So, give me an acro. Yeah, I guess acrobatics. We'll we'll do the whole thing. You shimmying up and climbing into it. Um, give me an acrobatics check at disadvantage with your chunky armor. Ooh, okay. As you do this, Sindri is just scribbling away and mesmerized by what whatever the hell's going on with Shatuli. So I'll use a flash of genius to get a 13. As you attempt to shimmy up, the armor stands perfectly still as you make your way, like your little Spider-Man climb up. But as you try to enter where the brain was, um, it reacts violently and kind of tosses you off. Um, give me a strength saving throw to hold on and not be like yeeted across the room. Yeah. Oh no, Orin. Well. Okay. Oh. I got news for you. Not gonna get it done. Oh. Damn it. So, <laughs> Orin just wanted to see bye -bye. what was inside the armor. So, he's gonna throw you just short of a mile. <laughs> of the magical pool. Fly off Team Rocket style. And the energy makes your hair stand on its head and your armor starts to feel almost warm this close to this kind of unbridled arcane energy. Uh, Orna's gonna yell out and say, no one's allowed to have cooler armor than me. I won't get to the bottom of this, I swear it! <laughs> it's the Hulkbuster for this equivalency. Um... All right, uh, Kelroth, next to go. Um, okay, everyone's so much faster than me that like I'm still just getting around the pillar, and then it's like, uh oh. <laughs> we dwarves um, are built for cross country. We're not built for the sprint. I'm a half elf. Um, <laughs> You're still no better than a dwarf in that way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I'm like the worst Alfie elf. Um, Orin looks okay, right? Like, he's not going to fall in and he didn't... Yeah, no, no, he just... Something. He skidded uh, just okay, short okay. of it, but... The he... armor's moving around, though. It, like, threw him off and stuff. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna... Can I squeeze in here and, pu and push the switch again like I did last time? Like, I know how to turn it. I know uh, I know it's I know it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, so I'm like, <laughs> oh, I know which way to turn it, you know? Um, Give me... Sleight of hand? Oh Jesus! I know. Oh Jesus! Hey, bro, we're getting to the end of the campaign, man. Somebody's gonna need oh, to make a performance Jesus. check in the next couple. Sleight of, of hand. This actually might be the first sleight of hand roll we've ever had. I, none I'm, of us have ever I'm tried to do anything I'm almost slightly. Almost guarantee you it is. Yeah, I don't, none of us ever try to do anything slightly. I guarantee you it is. Maybe Balder has done one, but I, that might be it. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe when you guys stole the dragon. Oh, G O G O. Um. Four? <laughs> That's pretty good, right? 
<laughs> Depends on the context. As a dexterous <laughs> person, no. Um, I was trying to strength my way in, you know, but that's it, okay. The helm horror doesn't even really try to react quickly. It just kind of follows your ham-handed attempt at sneaking by it and just kind of slaps your hand away with its immense strength and at least stops you from progressing any further. Well, that's great. Um, is is that considered my action? Am I gonna no, get I'll, give you, else? I'll give you that as a free Okay, action. okay. Kind of just like, uh, over there. Um, okay, okay. Since it's not letting me in, it gets the chop. The, like, weak little dainty chop of Kalaroth. Here we go. Dainty chop. Oh, it's, it's pretty good. 21? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. I mean, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but here we go. I'm still proud of it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Plus, so I did um, uh, 14 points of damage. Very nice. Uh, seven of which was uh, radiant. Okay. If that matters. Oh, yeah, the blessed rocks. Yeah. Yeah, I get blood. My every time I swing, it glows with a holy light. And as you hit this thing, it this kind of muffled grunting, strenuous rawr, rawr, as oh, geez, you what what's it called? Agnew. Blur? Agnew, Agnew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Jesus, this is like scary Agnew, medieval scary Agnew. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys for getting that. Um, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, did it did it look like it hurt it at all? Or yeah, did it like yeah. Okay, um, all right. You took two pretty significant, or a pretty significant chunk out of it. One, one, one mild significant chunk. Yeah. Okay. Um, um and then raise the shield. Now right. it's my turn. Uh, Balder. <sighs> Good Republican right. body, flabby, <laughs> rippled with phlebitis. Dolls and shit, that's good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move to this side of him, and I'm going to KO Ken. Oh, with the 19 plus, so 28 on the first one. Yes. And a 21 on the second one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hold on. Right up here. Look. I want to be on the stream. Uh, where's, there we go. Uh. <laughs> All right, go ahead and it's probably gonna pass, but go ahead and make me a strength save, please. I'm Doctor Two. Fuck me. Five. All right. That's a nat so one. nice. So it fails that. So that's. Twenty-four points of damage, and it gets pushed into this, whatever that is, uh, fifteen feet away. So I get attack of opportunity as it moves through my threat range too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not, go ahead. Not when it's not when it's forced like that. Oh, I really? thought. Yeah, I don't know if it has to move in. Um, so it's this is a solid thing. So it's gonna smash into it like a solid object, and it's going to take twelve bludgeoning damage as you just it just goes, you know, 
one inch punch slams up into the wall but slams yeah. into the, the column that powers the beam outside what did I say 12 12 yeah as then... it smashes in kind of stone dust is gonna fall uh, from the ceiling and for a really brief second the lights of the glowing pool go down to almost darkness before coming just back after a pregnant pause of time and then as it kind of like kind of like bounces off the back the second attack lands and it's for 10 more points of damage okay. and as it bounces back and you hit it square in the breastplate caving it in the lights continue to glow and as the shell of the helm tour stays very permanent in this plane and slant and slides down the column a voice escapes Jatuli's mouth you have doomed this city and all of the people in it the last guardian will not allow that to happen and on that note we will end it for today with something putting words in Jatuli's mouth. <laughs> That's, I'll tell you what I was going to do if you gave me one more round. What? I was going to huck this fucker into that blue energy. Just pick him up and give him a death belly driver right into the... <laughs> her, her end of Return of the Jedi. Yeet! Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, episode 36 in the books, the party seemingly moments away from their third tower out of four. And yeah, look folks, uh, we are getting very much near the end of this campaign. Um, we'll announce it on social media and I will make the group aware but just as where we sit right now to our next week's episode could be our um, our finale here uh, the plan is is that we will do uh, the final you know kind of in game at the table in character um, session with uh, the final encounter however that turns out and then given the opportunity we will come back uh, the next week and do a half episode where we do essentially like an epilogue for the characters who survived and what came of them um, after that uh, after that we're gonna probably take uh, some time off and it looks like we are good to go to premiere um, campaign 2 of uh, Twilight Tuesday on uh, November 17th I believe is the day uh, we're all going to stay together uh, new characters uh, all new narrative all new setting and a uh, brand new cast member filling up that fifth box um, over there so stay tuned for that um, we're really excited um, tonight was very kind of tense watching everybody kind of come to grips with what's going on and I know it's kind of repetitive that it's four towers the game wanted it to have eight so you're welcome um, but I mean <laughs> I I'm very excited to see how this is going to come to an end as we are just so, so close um, to it. I can't wait. Um, so, great night. Uh, some really cool kind of role play and thought dynamics here uh, amongst the group. As always, I say that, you know, they're great role players and they're great characters, but even better people behind them. Um, let's meet them real quick. Uh, I'll do a little business news and we shall get out of here uh, until tomorrow. Um, all right. Let us start with, um, let's start with Tensa. Um, Jatuli, interesting night. Uh, he's, something's going on with him for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, tell us a little about yourself. I'm Tensa. I, I love metal. I love wrestling and fighting and video games and tabletop RPGs. And I am the father of two cat children. <laughs> I have an awesome wife. And these guys are my friends. And I'm damn glad to be a part of it. Yay. Awesome. 
Uh, let us go down to uh, Landon. Also, some interesting things for Oren today. Uh, attempting to go Hulkbuster uh, armor was very cool, and I thought was actually would have been better if you weren't already in plate armor and tanky as fuck. Um, you're like a, you're like I picture you about the size of like a really like pissed off propane tank, um, just short and squat and kind of wide for your height, um, like a propane tank with feet. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, Oren had a good time tonight, even though he was a little worried at few, a few points. Um, but I'm Landon Baker. I am a software developer during the day. I have two big dogs, big puppies. Uh, one of them outweighs not me, and that's like a lean outweigh. He's a St. Bernard, so he's, he's not overweight. Um, and the other one outweighs my wife, so combined they outweigh us. Um, but they're they're awesome dogs. They think they're lap dogs, so they're always on top of us. Um, I do have a wife; she's awesome and is great about supporting me and playing my games. And uh, similar to everyone here, I love fantasy games. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I've said it probably a hundred times, but I'll say it again. Um, this is definitely the best group that I've had the pleasure to play with. Uh, I've got myself very fortunate to have gotten to play with this group of people. So uh, I'm excited for every week, and I'm especially excited for Campaign 2. This is the first campaign that I'll have played start to finish, so I'm taking lessons from the things that I would like to do differently as a player next time, and hopefully I can make a uh, some more member, uh, more memories as we go, and uh, that's me. Awesome, same buddy. I'm glad you're here, and I've I've learned a lot with you guys being your DM for 36 episodes now. Um, I can't wait to kind of start over and do cool new stuff uh, with campaign two. But uh, let's finish with this one first. Uh, let us go up to uh, one of our newest, our renewed subscribers tonight, Lewis. Uh, as always, thank you for support, homie. Um, we're we're really getting there, buddy. Um, you know, we uh, finished Dragon Heist together a long time ago and almost storm king thunder but we're almost there hey man the second module you know that's, yeah. that's who, who would have thunk it right yeah um but yeah i'm lewis a uh, long time D, D cohort of the wonderful dm who hosts us every week um uh lewis i have a wonderful wife who like the rest of these guys, uh, supports me and lets me play D and D every week. So you know, big shout out to her. I have two wonderful daughters, uh, a teenage daughter and a seven month old daughter. So they keep me busy and exhausted. And then two little fur babies, um, both of which who love to chase each other around the house. Um, other than that, I'm. A chef by day, and other than that, as of lately, just exhausted by night. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I look forward to playing D and D, and can't wait for more. Awesome. Uh, all right, let us finish up with our international correspondent, and definitely got into the thick of things tonight, despite their reliance on R and Jesus, which giveth and R and Jesus taketh away. Uh, does it tell us about yourself and? We're almost there, buddy. Um, yeah. My name's Dustin. I play the fantasy games and the Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm currently just working a lot with a future goal of potentially pursuing video game design in some capacity. Now that I'm double income and I don't have any kids. I can potentially save the money to go to school. Yay. And then, you know, get a debt. And... <laughs> I remember having I, I, money. I, I, I'm, I'm of a particular demographic that is blessed in not having the children. Um, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I remember what that was like. Or, or I mean, we, or signing a lot of paperwork and, you know, people are lazy. So, um, yeah, uh, life's pretty good. I'm about to go on a one-month-long vacation, but I have sp explicitly said that that does not affect my Dungeons & Dragons 
because I will play Dungeons and Dragons on the beach in Mexico because that's how important it is to me. I love playing with these people. Awesome. Awesome. Um, as always, that's our, our great cast. Um, I cherish them dearly. This channel would be nothing without them because this is the show that started it all. Um, so, as always, gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, I've been your host and Dungeon Master Manny. Um, just want to say thanks to the usual people, my players, uh, my wife, um, for putting up with me, who's actually possibly still in chat. I don't know. We'll find out uh, in a second, depending on how she reacts. Um, to uh, Lewis for the uh, renewed sub, to Wilson for the subs, uh, the bits, and the gift subs. Thank you, thank you so much. Hey, she is still in chat. Yay. Um, and to High Gain Sad, who uh, was a new follower right before we went on the air. Thank you for your support. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, there's a very good chance that next week, uh, October 19th, will be our series finale for Twilight Malediction, a rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign. Um, so stay tuned for that. Check out social media uh, for the for sure acknowledgement. I believe it probably will be, but uh, check in on social media for that. Um, tomorrow night uh, here on the channel, 7 p.m. Eastern time, you can check out season two of One Shot Wednesdays. Uh, last week we concluded season one with our big four-part uh, epic assault on Mount Celestia. That was uh, very popular, everybody enjoyed. Um, we're so thankful to everybody who came out, watched, followed, and subscribed because of that series. Um, starting tomorrow, we'll be doing season two with the odd little switch up that I will not be DMing the first six weeks of season two as I will get to be a player and enjoy the company of some of the great people who've played on this channel that I've only DM'd for and never had a chance to play for. So that's gonna be super exciting and also a chance to bring some new DMs in, learn a little bit something, and most importantly, actually get to play Dungeons and Dragons for once. Uh, I can't wait. So uh, yeah, tune in for season two of One Shot Wednesday starting tomorrow, 7 p.m., uh, October 13th. Uh, tune back in here uh, October 19th for potentially the series finale of uh, our, our premiere show on this channel. Um, nine, 10 months we've been at it. Um, it's been an unbelievable joy. Uh, it'll be even better to finally get there and get it done. Uh, but we'll see. Um, thanks to everybody who watched. Thanks to everybody who hung out and checked, who subscribed. Hey, Wilson, for the bits. Uh, to everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. And if not, back here next week, 7 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday night for the series finale of Twilight Malediction. Till then, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.